Welcome back to Joe's Son of Oxen. So, uh, Polly McCrory of Belfast, Northern Ireland, um, he defeats Leonard Carrillo um, with a 98-91 scorecard from the referee. The referee was the sole arbiter. But that doesn't really tell the whole story um, because Leonard Carrillo, he's one of those sort of gatekeeper types. He's from Colombia, based in Spain, in Barcelona. He's now 17 wins with 16 KOs, six defeats, three of them by stoppage, no draws. And he is one of those kill or be killed guys who throws caution to the wind, comes into the ring, slinging wild punches, everything, all sorts of power behind every single punch. Um, Doesn't vary his work at all. Doesn't have a great deal of technique, but is dangerous if you let him be. And McCrory outpoints him, like I say, 98-91. I thought it was closer than that. I really did. Um, Now, in the first round, there was... Was it the first round? Yeah, there was a knockdown in the first round where both men came out banging. They were looking to land punches. Um, McCrory, I think, something about nine KOs in 18 wins. He's now got 18 wins. Um, he was. It was almost like he was saying to Carrillo, you've got, you've got 16 KOs in 17 wins, but I'm not going to let you get brave with that power. Here's what I've got for you. And he started coming forward and, and clocking Carrillo. And in fact, Carrillo, of course, fired back, as he always does, with his huge winging, like he's almost bowling a ball. He threw one, um, orthodox fighter, by the way, he threw one <clears throat> wild right hand, which flew over McCrory's head. He leant in with the sheer force of his own punch, and McCrory came back with a, a left hand, caught him on the back of the head, which... And it, it was called a knockdown, but I mean, he's an orthodox fighter too. So the punch came over, clipped him on the back of the head, Carrillo, and down he went. And the referee called it uh, a knockdown. This was in the first round. <clears throat> then Carrillo, um, he wasn't that fussed. He wasn't that bothered. He managed to land, um, I, don't know, was it? I think it was a left hand actually, rather than a right. It must have been a hook. Again, I'm watching this only five minutes after watching the fight. I never, I always do these videos immediately after I've watched the fight, you know, just to give you a sort of instant reaction. But I think it was a left hook, might have been left hook or a left left hand, left hand of some sort. And that stung McCrory, and McCrory tottered back, and you thought, oh, what's going on here? Um, and the, suddenly the crowd was silent because this was in the Odyssey Arena in Belfast, you know, McCrory's home city. But he didn't go down. He didn't go down. Carrillo put it on him. But nevertheless, at the end of the round, you thought, OK, we'll go with the 10-8 from McCrory. Then the fight became, in the second round, I thought Carrillo picked up where he left off at the end of the first by putting it on McCrory. And I gave him that second round. I thought he was aggressive, come forward, looking to land. I thought he was always looking to land big, big punches, um, not being that fussy um, about disguising his work at all. Walking in the front door, not boxing and really at all. It was just sort of move forward. weren't a lot of jabs going in. It was just these leading with big, huge punches that were clearly dangerous, but could be avoided. And he left. I mean, Carrillo left huge spaces for countering. But in that second round, I thought McCrory was just trying to find his legs again. And you saw this in the third round because even though I gave Carrillo the second round. I thought McCrory won the third. Um, Again, landing some, you know, some decent work himself. Um, he didn't have the sort of power of Carrillo. But I thought Carrillo put so much into those first few rounds that by the fourth, he was really sagging. And between rounds, he was, you know, gasping for air almost. And he thought, I wonder if McCrory can stop him, if he can put it on him and um, finish the guy off, you know, just exhaust him. Well, to Carrillo's credit, he managed to hang on. He managed to actually work his way back in. And he wasn't winning that many rounds, to be honest. I thought McCrory's work was tidier, cleaner. Um, I thought Carrillo was missing too much. There were moments when he looked dangerous, little cameos where McCrory was perhaps forced back to the ropes momentarily, maybe in a corner. You could tell Carrillo's sort of seek and destroy mission was that was his plan a b and c he he doesn't have the skills the technique to 
sort of box his way past guys. I mean, with six defeats and, you know, three of those were KOs, it, he's kind of a kill or be killed guy, you know, definitely. Uh, and the fight, the fight progressed, but it was interesting because Carrillo did seem to get a second wind um, down the stretch. This was a 10-rounder. And in the last round, he actually, it seemed to me like McCrory was tiring. And maybe mentally he was, the you know, the, the exhaustion of having to concentrate so much on a guy in front of you who's got that much power and stay out of trouble while landing your own punches, which he was doing quite well for chunks of the fight, most of the fight. Nevertheless, it seemed to take its toll a bit. And in the 10th round, Carrillo just let it all hang out. I mean, <laughs> even by his standards, he was throwing caution to the wind and throwing huge, all sorts of punches, bullying McCrory forward. And um, I mean, it was, he was quite dirty, actually, early on, earlier on anyway. He, he got a severe talking to for rabbit punching. And it wasn't just one rabbit punch, it was like three or four. And I thought the referee was going to take a point off him. Uh, and he was fighting kind of dirty, certainly through the middle rounds. But maybe that's what took McCrory out of his out of his comfort zone. Not that he never really had a comfort zone, but maybe it took him out of his out of his um, technique, out of his game plan. Because uh, in the final round, Korea was putting it on McCrory, and McCrory was looking like both exhausted and hurt. And in fact, he made it to the final bell, got the win. But, uh, you know, he's 18 and 1 now, McCrory. Um, and his previous fight was against Edgar Belanga, where he got stopped in six rounds. Um, he's not a bad European level fighter, um, McCrory. You know, he's, he's beaten some, some decent fights. I mean, he went over to Germany, beat Leon Bunn. He was the first, first person to beat Leon Bunn, stopped him in six rounds. Uh, you got a winner with Steve Woodall, who was 18 1 and 1. That was a 10 round decision. Um, you know, he's not bad. He's not a bad fighter at all. Um, but not world class. I wouldn't say he was world class. I'd say he was a good European level fighter. And um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if, uh, you know, if he got a few paydays. Um, he is 36 now, McCrory. So. If you want to get those paydays, grab them now. Carrillo's 35. So we're talking about um, we're talking about two guys who are, you know, roughly the same age. I know McCrory. Yeah, I don't see him going beyond European level. He didn't look shot. But the way he kind of looks very fatigued after 10 rounds was a bit telling. I'm not too sure about that. Um mm. Well, anyway, we'll see. And this, by the way, was on ProBox, which is free on YouTube. ProBox TV is free on YouTube. This was over in Belfast, this card. If you're not watching ProBox, I mean, this was a good little card. You had four fights that were, you know, pretty good quality. This wasn't a bad fight. It was all right. Um, and there were two on the undercard. They were real terrific little tear-ups. They really were good good fights. Um, but, yeah, what did you think? Go and have a look at it. Tell me what you thought. Thought of Paddy McCrory, Paddy McCrory. Um, how far do you think he can go? I think he's probably reached his ceiling now. Um, he's actually saying beforehand that he's got a full-time job and that boxing is a sort of sideline. Hmm, interesting. Okay. It's good that he's got something going on where he can earn money, pay his bills, without having to rely on boxing. But, of course, at 36, um, clock's ticking. And uh, if he wants to... In try and have another go at invading the world level. I mean, he lost to Belanga in six, but if he wants to have another go, another bite of the cherry, why not? I hope he gets a good payday and a chance. But what did you think? Comments below as usual. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. And, you know, it's free. It takes you a second and it's much, much appreciated. Okay, ladies and gents, thank you very much and bye for now.